Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back with me Nathan. Google finally released the Gemini 3 model and in this video, I will try it out and share what I think about it. So just a few hours ago, Gemini 3 Pro Preview model has finally been released by Google and it's their most intelligent model that can help you bring any idea to life. The model is delivering state-of-the-art reasoning, deep multi-model understanding, and powerful coding capabilities to assist you in building complex applications. With the new upgraded agenda capabilities, Gemini 3.0 can now plan, execute, and complete complex tasks faster and more reliably than anything Google has ever released before. Currently, it ranks number one on LM Arena for text, vision, and web dev categories, surpassing other soda models that are out there. The demo videos are also very interesting as the quality of the output looks pretty impressive. You can give Gemini 3 anything, such as images, PDFs, or handwritten scribbles, and it will create whatever you want. An image can become a board game, a napkin sketch turns into a full website, and a diagram could turn into an interactive lesson. So yeah, it seems to be more capable than previous models. Now let's talk about the benchmark really quick. Because as always, the benchmark is showing the model crushing them all. As it stands, it beats Sonnet and GPT 5.1 in all of the benchmarks except the SWE bench verified over here. So for the agentic coding single attempt, the test score is 1% below Sonnet 4.5, but overall, Gemini 3 scores are pretty awesome. Next, let's explore the pricing of the model. Gemini 3 Pro costs $2 for input and $12 for output per 1 million token when you use less than 200,000 token. Over that amount, the price will be $4 for input and $18 for output per 1 million token. It's more expensive than Gemini 2.5 Pro, but it's still cheaper than Sonnet 4.5. In other words, if Gemini 3 Pro is actually good, then you can say goodbye to Sonnet 4.5. And if you want to use the model, it is now available everywhere you can access Gemini models, such as in the AI Studio here, just click on the model option and it will be activated. You can also click the model card on the right sidebar to see all the available models and you can activate the Gemini 3 Pro Preview model here. You can also get it on Gemini CLI. So first, update the tool to the latest version using the npm install command. And once the update is completed, run the Gemini command to activate the CLI. Once the CLI is running, go to the settings option and then turn on the preview features over here and then restart the CLI for the changes to take effect. After that, run the slash model command and here you can select between auto or pro option to use the Gemini 3 model. When you select auto or pro, the Gemini CLI will attempt to use Gemini 3 pro preview first before falling back to the previous model. Finally, you can also get it in VS Code extensions like client, root code, and Kilo code. For example, here in Kilo code, just head over to the provider settings and then change the selected model to Gemini 3 Pro Preview as follows. Click on the model and just like that, you can now use Gemini 3 Pro Preview as your AI coding assistant. Along with Gemini 3, Google also released their own IDE called Anti-Gravity. Um, this seems to be an alternative to VS Code and Cursor, so I will explore it on the next video. Alright, it's time to get started with the most exciting part, which is to test the model. For the first test, I will ask Gemini 3 to build a modern, tech-focused landing page for a software development agency, make the landing page as creative and alive as you can, add all elements of a great landing page, animations, particles, hover effects, and so on. Press enter and let the model work on the request. It will generate the code for the landing page, and as this will take a while, I will skip ahead to when it's finished. And here's the result from Gemini 3, I will just copy the HTML code here and then run it on a local server. Alright, here's the landing page rendered on the browser. Uh, it looks quite impressive, kinda unique as even the mouse icon here is changed to another icon. If we scroll down here, there is the expertise section and it has like animation changing the icon colors. And then below that, there's the portfolio section, uh, and this seems to be a horizontal scrolling part, so it scrolls to the right as shown here. Now, the portfolio output seems to lack image as the placeholder, as we can see there is a broken image. But let's continue for now. And then here's the call to action, and then the footer over here. And honestly, I think this generation is quite unique, as I don't really gave it detailed instructions. 
but I quite like the output and I think this can serve as a great inspiration. And here's a second result from the same prom. Now this one is also unique as you can see that the background particles move when the mouse hovers near to it. And then if we scroll down a bit to see the portfolio, now the image is added by Gemini 3 this time and it has zoom animation when I hover over it. So that's pretty nice. I do think Gemini 3 generation here is quite impressive. But for now, let's move on and do a different test. And this time, let's ask Gemini to use 3JS to create a 3D world of a butterfly flying in a garden of flowers and a lake. Make it as animated and beautiful as you can. Send the prompt to the model and let it process the request. After a while, it will be completed and I will copy the result to render it on the browser. And here's the rendered output. Mm, I think this looks very nice. I'm quite impressed with the result. The butterfly is flying over the lake and then there's also the sun reflection here on the lake which is a pretty nice touch and there are flowers all around the garden. We can zoom out very far here until nothing can be seen and then we can zoom in and move around as well. Overall this output is very good. It's been a while since I tried creative prompts as I usually focused on front end and back end development. Next, I'm going to test create a Minecraft simulator, so let Gemini work on this prompt, and we will skip ahead to the result. And here's the result from Gemini 3. Hmm, it looks pretty basic for now, uh, looks like I need to put a more detailed prompt, but let's just test it out real quick. So I can move around using the keyboard here, and then jump around with space, and uh, I also can place blocks here, but it seems I can't delete the blocks yet. I can change the block color just fine place some more blocks here. But yeah, breaking the blocks with left click doesn't seem to work. Well, this one could be better, but for now, let's do a final test. And that is to design and create a Windows operating system simulator. I will ask Gemini to make it fully functional from text editor, terminal, file manager, paint program, and then make it as interesting and highly detailed as possible. Go full creative on this test. All right, let's skip ahead to the result. And here's the operating system simulator, I'm running it on the browser. Okay, so it really looks like a desktop operating system. And then there is the Windows start button here, and it's showing Pinet apps. Alright, let's try out the notepad here. Uh, so I can write text on this, just like a real notepad application. And then we can also open a terminal here. Uh, let's try to run some commands here, like maybe pwd to print working directory. Uh, it seems the command is unavailable. Uh, let's try another one, maybe cd. Okay, it's not working either. Okay, maybe try to run help first. So here are the available commands. Now let's try to run the dir command. Okay, now it works. Let's try the python command next to see if we can run some python code. Now the python program is active here. Uh, so let's try maybe the print function first. Alright, it seems to work. Now let's try to create some variables. I will create a equal 5, and then b equal 3, and then a plus b. Okay, we have the right result here, which is a. If you like this video and would love to support the channel, you can consider donating to my channel through the super thanks option below. Or you can consider joining my YouTube membership where you can use this channel's emojis, get early access to new videos, plus a lot more. But overall, that's basically it for this video. The Gemini 3 model is quite impressive, and for its pricing range, the model could be the best option, as it's cheaper than both Opus and Sonnet while still delivering quality results. I think I will use this as an alternative to Sonnet 4.5 for a while, and see how it really performs for my day-to-day -day use cases. But yeah, from the launch of BART to this, I think Google really has the biggest comeback in the AI model race for now. And now we have come to the end of this video. So, what do you think about the Gemini 3 Pro Preview model? I encourage you to try it out for yourself and let me know what you think about it. I hope you all enjoyed today's video and get some value out of it. Let me know your thoughts and questions in the comments below. I'll join the conversation and reply as often as I can. Also, if you're new to the channel, my name is Nathan and I hope you'll learn how to code and use AI tools. Make sure you subscribe if that's something you find useful. Don't forget to like this video, turn on the notification bell, all the good stuff as it really helps the channel to grow. With that being said, thanks so much for watching until the end. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in other videos. Bye bye!